Um, who am I? Um, my name has been mentioned a couple of times. Uh, my name is Carlos Barahona, and I work at the University of Reading with the Statistical Services Center. And we basically try to help people produce and use information that is usually statistics. Uh, the, the, um, why did I get involved in this <laughs> mess, <laughs> <laughs> in this area? Um, you, you see, I, I was trained uh, as a statistician, and I was asked very difficult questions that I couldn't answer uh, through my tools. And, and it was so evident that some of the tools that some of the colleagues were using had serious, much better potential to generate the type of information that we needed to, for decision making, or and we needed to help people for decision making. Uh, and so it was obvious that we needed to move in that direction. And uh, yes, enough has been said about how powerful they are, and I've seen the, your hands going up saying, yes, we've seen that. Uh, so I'm not going to, to, to mention any of that, but I'm going to say that we have had serious challenges over the last 15, 20 years in, in trying to generate uh, estimates that apply from a small number of people, sites from a sample into a population. And I'm sorry, I am a statistician, so I'm going to use this type of terminology. Uh, and, and, and how do we do that so that the principles that support the statistical method of statistical inference can be applied to this type of exercise. And, and, that, and that is a challenge that, that has loads of trade-offs in all sorts of areas. Um, the, the, there are certain things that have happened, and I think the book is really good because it's a compilation of excellent examples of where we have got to. And, and I, from that point of view, it's really useful at this point because up to 10 years ago, loads of people were talking about this, but then there was change in the fashion for, from the funders, and then it went down, and <coughs> now there are, there's a new generation that is beginning to discover this kind of thing, and, and that compilation of, of papers, I think, is really worth having. Um, and there are some important things. We have learned how to adapt our behavior as people who are interested in evidence. And we have learned, those of us who are hardline statisticians, we have learned that there are things that are m much more interesting and much richer in terms of the work that other colleagues do. We have also learned that there are trade-offs and have experimented with <laughs> different options in, in, in practice. And, and from that process, there, there are advantages and disadvantages that we know about. And, and the case studies, the, the testimonies that are in the book are, are important from that point of view. We have developed awareness among decision makers and about those who are gathering information about the options that are available. Uh, uh, and, and that is really important. This is no longer a, a matter of trying to get the chief statistician of DFID to come and talk <laughs> about the book. <laughs> Neil is here. And I mean that, that's, that, that's really a big change, an important change. And I think it has been demonstrated that it is possible. It is possible to, through participatory processes, generate information that can be used to make a statistical inference about populations if certain things are done. Um, there are some things that I think we must remember. And we must remember that participation and participatory processes were not, they did not arrive here for the purpose of generating numbers. Uh, that there, is, there are much better reasons for doing participatory processes, and that the possibility of generating numbers is one of the products that comes from it, but is not the only product. And I tend to be focusing on only that product, so I have to keep reminding myself that participation is not about that. Um, we also must remember that there is a price to pay when we generate numbers for participation, and it's a price that often is money, often is time, often is capacity development, but there is a price to pay in terms of the trade-offs uh, of participation empowerment and the generation of numbers, and that is something we struggle with. I have struggled with uh, very frequently. The other thing I keep reminding myself, and there are really good examples in the book, is that life is not all about inferences. 
the, the, there is important, important numerical information that is relevant at local level. And there is information that is gathered that actually is a census, and therefore we are not making inferences. And there are other issues where my discipline has some experience that we have contributed to the party numbers process, uh, but, but not everything is about inferences. Uh, and those local censuses, those images of, uh, of uh, communities or populations that with information that is evident to them, that is in the public domain and, and that they, through discussion, systematize, is incredibly useful for decision making. Uh, the, then I want to think about what are the challenges for the future. And I think we, w over 15, 20 years, we've created a body of evidence that says it's possible, uh, and we could continue repeating this over and over, and that would be fine. Uh, I think there is more. I think there is the challenge of empowerment of participants through the accumulation of data. Uh, you have heard the story of the farmer who says, oh, you come here to, to ask me questions in a participatory manner. Have a look at those pictures on the wall. I am sure that we've done it before, <laughs> and you can collect it from that. Mm -hmm. now, now, I haven't come across it myself, but it's a really nice anecdote. Uh, I, I think we need to do much better at that. Actually, the, the establishments of data banks at local level that enable the people locally to follow the trajectory of indicators are things that are of importance is fundamental for the near future. And the developments that we have had in the last few years in terms of technologies to do that are really breathtaking and we need to do something about that. And we see examples from Robert on the wall where it is happening, but I think we need to do much more than that. I think we have a serious challenge about ethics, and with this point I finish. Uh, <laughs> uh, it is that if in my university I want to do anything to do with people, I need to ask for ethical approval. We go out into the develop, developing world and we do all sorts of things without asking anybody, and sometimes even without asking permission from the people that we ask this question for. And this applies throughout. Uh, many of the research and monitoring evaluation that I get involved with. And I think that if we are going to do party numbers, we need to continue bringing up again and again what kind of ethical code we are going, are going to follow and how institutions need to be much more aware about the ethics of generating, producing, storing, and making public information about people. Thanks very much indeed, Carlos. Um, really nice to hear the point about empowerment through data and sort of local censuses as well. Claire. 